Sodom and Gomorrah by Tony Alamo. Near Jericho in Israel is a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. If you see it, you'll know without a doubt that God is a God of judgment. You can pick up yellow pieces of sulfur and they burn when you light them. It's the most frightening sight you'll ever see. The mountains look as though God had judo chopped the tops of the mountains into huge slices. Then with his giant fist, smashed everything into a sunken heap, buried it in salt, sulfur, brimstone, and fire. Take home a yellow piece of sulfur, brimstone, as a souvenir. Take an extra piece with you to put in the voters' ballot box when the public says, let's vote to see if same-sex marriage is okay. Never say with the crowd that God's word isn't true. We're not able to know right, wrong, good, or evil without God's word. This entire area is hotter than any other place in the Holy Land. It's also the most lifeless area. There are large mountains of salt nearby. It doesn't matter how much the Jordan River flows and pours its fresh water into the Dead Sea. The water of the Dead Sea is extremely salty and will never sustain life, produce fish. The collapsing of the mountains made the area very desolate and there's a huge crater in the ground near the hotels. The area is called En Gedi, which means the eye of the sheep. There are three big hotels there and ten smaller ones, all with swimming pools. The big crater and the actual destruction are located on the back road going from En Gedi to Beersheba. When you stand on the edge of the top of the crater, you can clearly see the destruction, the collapsed mountain area of Sodom and Gomorrah. Behind the crater, there are mountains with clouds and fog covering them. The quietness and the desolation make you nervous. It's almost impossible to see the bottom of the crater and it's very wide. How many huge craters in the ground are there? Holes so big the earth split, which led to the destruction and burying of Sodom and Gomorrah. Jericho must be included too, because Sodom is just a district of Jericho. As you're going down the mountain road from Jerusalem to Jericho, your ears pop as if you were landing in an airplane. Jericho is far below sea level, the lowest place on the whole earth. That's because God smashed the whole area down. He made this the lowest point on earth for the sin they committed. Jericho, except for the city, is almost empty, and there is hardly any life there, as the land has been cursed. It makes you feel sad. The landscape is very harsh. It doesn't matter how many times people try to develop the land, to bring some kind of life and fun to it. The land beats them back and it does not prosper. You can actually see the different caves and houses there which have been destroyed. The people who live there are few and they are mostly shepherds. Their lifestyle is very harsh and cruel as the land is so cruel and their faces look as hard as a rock. People still to this day pick up the sulfur rocks, brimstones that God showered the area with. They take souvenirs and try to light the sulfur rocks with matches. Grave robbers and archaeologists frequent these areas for coffins and graves. The robbers dig at night, searching for bodies, jars, cups, jewelry, and furniture they can sell before the archaeologists find them. They also try to dig out the destroyed caves and houses from the rocks, brimstone, and sulfur. Anyone who looks at the magnitude of the destruction in this area will have no doubt that this is actually God's destruction and punishment on the area, as the entire land of Israel is green and flourishing, except for the areas of Sodom and the surrounding villages. God shall soon bring his destruction on the earth again, and on the entire world. In the U.S., we have never experienced an earthquake higher than a 9.2 on the Richter scale. It's easy to see that if God's destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah had been judged on today's Richter scale, it would have been 25.0 or higher. This is not taking into account the fire and brimstone raining down hard on the people 
because of their vile sex practices, such as homosexuality and fornication. This entire area should be a testimony of God to all people, especially those perverts who practice homosexuality and lesbianism. After observing all this, you will know that God is not a kidder. He really means what he says. It is the end of time, so don't be a kidder either when you say this prayer to God. My Lord and my God, have mercy upon my soul, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. I believe that he died on the cross and shed his precious blood for the forgiveness of all my former sins. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit and that he sits on the right hand of God at this moment hearing my confession of sin and this prayer. I open up the door of my heart and I invite you into my heart, Lord Jesus. Wash all of my filthy sins away in the precious blood that you shed in my place on the cross at Calvary. You will not turn me away, Lord Jesus. You will forgive my sins and save my soul. I know because your word, the Bible, says so. Your word says that you will turn no one away, and that includes me. Therefore, I know that you have heard me, and I know that you have answered me, and I know that I am saved. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. And I will show my thankfulness by doing as you command and sin no more. After salvation, Jesus said to be baptized, fully submerged in water, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then study the King James Version Bible, and for your benefit and the benefit of others, do what it says. Christ and God the Father now live in you through the Holy Spirit. There is a way you can receive a fuller portion of the divine nature of God in you. The more the divine nature of God lives in you, the more you will be able to stand against the temptations that have so easily moved so many millions of Christians away from salvation. Pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. For instructions on how to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit and to receive more of God's holy nature, ask for our literature or call, for without holiness, no man shall see God. Hebrews 12:14. The Lord wants you to tell others of your salvation. You can become a distributor of Pastor Tony Alamo's gospel literature. We'll send you literature free of charge. Call or email us for more information. Share this message with someone else. If you want the world saved as Jesus commands, then don't rob God of his tithes and offerings. God said, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation and this whole world. Bring ye all the tithes. A tithe is 10% of your gross income into the storehouse, that there may be meat, spiritual food in my house, souls saved. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts, Malachi 3, 8-12.